Hey everyone, welcome to week 10, day one. Next week I'm not gonna be able to use my hands because it's, I don't have any more fingers. Uh, this week we're gonna be tackling our fears. So we're gonna be painting things that we're afraid of painting, which I think is awesome. So instead of running away from the things that we don't know how to paint, uh, we're gonna tackle them. We're gonna really, really try to push this week and do those things that we've avoided painting for so long. So let's see what we do uh, today. Bye. Okay, let's get started. For this week, I thought it would be cool if we really tried to paint the things that we try to avoid the most, those things we are horrified of, those things that we are absolutely scared of. And there's no rational way of explaining why we try to avoid those things. We can pretty much just say that we believe that they are more difficult than the other things, uh, subject matter that we choose to paint. But the truth is, and I actually firmly believe this, I don't really feel that there's things that are more difficult than others. There's things that require more patience, maybe. There's things that need you as a painter to be far more conscious of what you're doing. There's things that you have to have uh, more clarity in your drawing while you're painting. There's things that are going to take more time. There's things that are going to need to be more precise. But if I really, really think about it, in terms of, of the fundamentals of painting, I can't see why something would be more difficult than something else. That's what I repeat to myself. That's what I tell myself constantly. But the truth is that there's tons of things, very arbitrary things, that all of us, every single painter that I've known, thinks that are more difficult than others. And because we assume them as being more difficult than other subject matter, we avoid them. Or when we have to paint them, we try to find very almost uh, shorthand ways of solving them just so we don't deal with the, uh, with the trouble of painting them. And what I thought was going to be interesting for this week is that we first try and accept that we do have these shortcomings when we try to when we try to paint images with these subject matters and that we, instead of falling into our regular traps, we actually say, okay, I'm going to try and make the best out of this horrible situation and go for it. I'm going to attack all these things that scare me, that horrify me. And let's see what comes out of this. In my case, uh, hands were a big, big problem for the longest time. And I remember the exact moment, and this is, this is kind of weird, but it was an exact moment, when I decided that they were not going to be a problem anymore. And I remember it was right before I was coming back from New York to, um, to live in Colombia again. I had already quit my job, and I was trying to get everything in order so I, I could uh, fly back. So I had a couple of weeks. I remember I had probably like three weeks or maybe four weeks or a month where I was trying to get all my stuff together and I had nothing to do. And it was weird because I was working as, a, as an illustrator for, I don't know, I would draw for maybe 12 hours a day, five days a week, maybe, you know, also work on the weekends. And suddenly I had all this free time and <laughs> it was very strange because you would think, oh, you can just rest. But I just didn't know what to do with myself. So I would go to the uh, public library on 42nd and I would take out all these books that were part of the sort of permanent collection, the one that's, you know, stuff that you can't really take out from the library. You have to look at books inside. So I would ask for all these books that were really nice, old books, they, you know, a bunch of old art books. And I remember particularly asking for uh, books on, it was uh, L'Hermite and Maisonnier, uh, two French painters, 19th century French painters. And I was looking at Every single painting, it was just full of all these hands in like different poses and just so energetic and with such powerful gestures that I was like, I can't even do regular hands, let alone hands in like these amazing gestures. Instead of thinking that 
at first I had to do all the traditional stuff where you investigate the underlying structure of a hand, like the bones, muscles, and then you try to do these very kind of simple hands and, and eventually try to make things a little more complicated. I was like, no, no, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to tackle this head on. And I remember I would take a sketchbook with me and I wrote this on these little pages where I would just make sketches off of these two books. I remember just writing in like bold letters and like I capitalized every letter. I, I said, attack the hands. Don't be afraid anymore. Like attack the hands. And I, I think that that made a huge difference in my painting career. Because instead of saying, wow, I just don't have the knowledge, I don't have the experience because I don't know how to construct a hand, I don't, I could have found so many reasons why I wasn't good at painting hands to convince myself that I wasn't good. Then instead of just looking for those, I decided those didn't exist. <laughs> and I said, every single painting that I'm going to do now, instead of just having these regular poses for the hands, I'm just going to try to make them not strange looking, I guess, but just stuff that I, when I would see it, I would be like, oh, that's way too hard to paint. And I would say, no, I don't care if it's hard to paint. If it looks amazing, I want that. I want to try and paint those hands. And I started doing this to myself. <laughs> and it sounds like torture, but it, it wasn't. It really, really wasn't. I just proved to myself that if you really go for things and not convince yourself that you're not good enough or that you don't know enough or that your drawing skills are not good enough. Like I said, maybe it means that you it takes more time, that you have to take a little bit more time. You have to check your drawing, not once, not twice, but three times. Maybe it means that. Maybe it means that you have to pre-mix your color, which I don't do, but you know, maybe you need to control your color. Maybe you need to work on a four color palette. Maybe you need to work on a three color palette just so you can gain some footing and say, wow, I'm, I'm actually capable of doing things that I thought I wasn't only months before. And that made a huge difference for me. But, and this is the, <laughs> this is the weird thing, like you would think that after all this time, I would have just decided that <laughs> nothing is difficult and I can just attack anything that's put right in front of me and I can just paint anything. And the truth is, it's not. There's tons of things that I feel super insecure about painting, about drawing. And regarding hands, when fingers are interlaced, I've always said no. Well, you know, if somebody poses for me and they have their fingers interlaced, I'm always like, no, 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 I don't want this. I, I really don't. And uh, only in like I think it was last month that I did a painting of Danny that it was um it was sort of evoking the Gwen John controlled palette and the shortened value scale. There's a pose uh, of the hands in there where the fingers are interlaced, but because I was reducing my contrast so much and I was reducing my value so much that. I just felt I was painting something that was super abstract. So I didn't really realize, but it was still difficult. I still see that painting and I actually liked how that painting came out quite a bit, but I still remember how I tried to paint those hands and I'm like, oh, that was difficult. That was really difficult. I, like, I, I didn't want to think of them as hands, but, and I don't know what it is. If I would try to rationally explain why, I can't find a real reason to say why these hands are difficult for me. I just think I see a ton of information. And when I see them symmetrically interlaced, I just think they look like sausages, like a pack of sausages. And, <laughs> and it just kills me. It, whenever I see those hands, I'm like, I can't paint this. I just, th this is way, way too much. So I thought I was going to do this and I was going to do this actually even more difficult for myself and try to have not just a very kind of symmetrical, even distribution of those interlaced fingers, but I would break them a little bit. Fingers just kind of turning in these weird gestures. And I thought whenever I see hands like this, I just run away. I just run to the opposite direction. And this week is not about this. This week is is not about doing what we usually do just to find comfort again in painting. This week is going to be about saying, hey, this has always been tough for me. Don't ask me why. I am horrified of this. This literally scares the living crap out of me. I'm going to try and paint it. 
And while painting it, I'm going to try to figure out what it is I'm scared about. And because I was so scared, I started, and I think you guys noticed it, I took my rigger brush and I started with a, a very, not elaborate, I guess, but just a tight drawing. I really was so scared that I was like, no, I, I need some drawing marks. I need some clean drawing marks for this because it's not going to work for me. If I, just, if I just leave my drawing to chance, I'm going to get lost. This is going to be painful. So I gave myself that. I told myself, okay, if this is scaring you, just give yourself some space where you can find, again, some footing where you can have a ground that you can uh, actually build from and just work on your drawing. Just take 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes to do a nice drawing, like a controlled drawing where you're measuring, you're, you're sure about your angles, you're sure about proportions. And that's what I did. When I usually think that something's going to be very scary to paint and draw at the same time, I tell myself, okay, I am human, this is going to be tough, let me solve the drawing first, and then I can worry about all the painting. That's what I did, and I think it helped. And while I was painting it, I was telling myself, okay, you do have the drawing, but don't make these hands like way, way too tight. In my mind, I was always remembering Boznanska, Olga Boznanska, the painter that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, and her hands, and you're going to see example of those hands here, her hands are just amazing like there's nothing that is overly descriptive about the structure of those hands it's just it's like these hands are just they were created in paint like there's no knowledge that hands are actually made of muscle and bone and tissue and skin no it's almost like hands are paint you actually believe that these hands kind of live and breathe in paint like that is their nature i love that i absolutely love that about those hands they they don't try to acknowledge the fact that they have knuckles or fingernails or wrinkles it's incredible i can't do a pair of hands like she does because i'm she paints a thousand times better than i ever will but i can remind myself of why actually i'm attracted to those hands that she paints and i try to then incorporate that which I like in the way she interprets hands into my own painting. So you've heard me say this a ton, but in my mind, I kept saying, okay, looser, 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 simpler, simpler. Even if I'm doing a little highlight on the tip of the finger, just go looser, bigger, step back, step back, step back. That was the key to this painting. Just telling myself, if you're overcomplicating it, if you're thinking about way too much detail, if you're not seeing the wholeness of these two hands, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So I told myself, even if I'm hovering right above my painting because I'm sitting down and I'm actually painting at a, what's basically like a drawing table, I, I constantly told myself, just step back, step back, step back. And it's not like a literally step back. It's just like your mind has to almost push back and say, look at the whole, look at the wholeness, look at the wholeness of what you're painting. And it was amazing. <laughs> it was it was actually pretty amazing. I gave myself a better chance to do this also by painting with a four color palette. So I went back to <laughs> that palette that I treasure the most, which is uh, titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, and ivory black. And I told myself, just think of coolness, warmness, think of light, dark, think of yellower, greener, bluer, uh, redder, uh, and, and just think of those terms. Think of everything in, in relative terms, and this is going to be fine. <laughs> I, I tried to tell myself constantly, like, yes, this is going to be okay, this is going to be fine, <laughs> and I'm very happy. I'm actually super, super happy with how it, it came out. I also give myself like a focus point, and I think that actually helped a ton which means that uh, these first like three fingers the first if you go from top to bottom the first uh, three fingers so the index finger middle finger <laughs> and the ring finger were super important but specifically just the index finger and the um, and the middle finger and I told myself I'm gonna focus in on these and then kind of slowly slowly abstract into color the rest and when I did that, it's just kind of everything made sense. It just, it, it wasn't so over, overwhelming. I just, uh, I realized that if I took it one step at a time, then my mind was clear and I saw it 
as something that was organized and I saw it as something that I could digest. And I could digest it because I made a drawing that was, maybe it wasn't perfect and I did have to shift uh, a few things while I was painting, but it gave me a stable ground to start from. So I had that and then I, I told myself, okay, in terms of color, don't struggle, just go for basics, go for, you know, very simple things and just try to concentrate to make these hands simple but powerful with just very little paint. This is a perfect palette to do that. So I was like, okay, let's try to do this. And I was happy. So I thought they came out like a super, super nice study of not only of fingers that are interlaced, these are actually Danny's hands, and they feel like her hands. I could tell you right now, the way the fingers break, it totally feels like her hands. That's something that, for example, she can do with her hands, but I can't do with mine. So I actually love that. It's not just about painting a pair of hands, like, you know, these hands that could be anyone's hands. It's also very important to realize that Hands are so, so powerful and they carry so much character that they are a portrait in and of themselves. So we have to be able to not only say a hand, but just say, no, I'm going to say uh, these very specific, these highly particular hands that belong to this person. You know, this person actually communicates with these hands and I have to be able to get to that. And this gives me the chance to speak about one of the artists that I admire the most. He was the one reason that I wanted to do an MFA, which I never ended up doing. I only have a BFA, if you guys were wondering. I graduated SVA, and I did super well. Honestly, I, I, I think I was scared at the time to not try and um, apply for a for an MFA because I was alone and honestly I needed a job to stay there like if I didn't have a job I couldn't make you know that month's rent and I would have to go back home so I had no like safety net I had nothing so for me it was more important to get a job than to keep studying studying just meant more money that I was going to owe somebody so that didn't make sense but I think I may have had the opportunity, like a real opportunity to get a scholarship. And I never pursued that, unfortunately. But the one place I wanted to go was to uh, Syracuse to, to do my MFA under uh, Jerome Witkin. And I really do think that he's one of the best 20th century painters in America. And, you know, for me, and I'm obviously biased, but in the world, I, I really think Jerome is just an incredible, incredible painter. He has, aside from a bunch of paintings that to me are absolutely brilliant, but he has three lithographs where he studies his own hands that I really do believe those are the best hands. I'm going to say it, hyperbole, but I don't care, but I'm going to say it. And I've thought about this because I've seen these hands for probably the last, I don't know, 15 years maybe. and. I think they're the best drawn hands in history, in art history. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I am going to say it. Obviously, this is this is very very subjective. This this is just my taste, but I can't think of anyone being able to do just such powerful hands and just hands that absolutely ooze character and strength. It's just I've rarely seen such confidence in drawing marks like the ones uh, Witkin is able to produce. So honestly, you're going to see them here. These three uh, lithos are the best hands I've ever, ever, ever seen. So whenever I'm scared of painting hands, I always think of these and I tell myself, this is what you're missing. If you're avoiding trying to do powerful hands, this is what you're never going to be able to get to. And when I see it that way, I tell myself, wow, that's, you know, that's way too big of a thing to just dismiss. And I want to give myself the chance to see if I could ever say anything as powerful as these hands. So, so Jerome Witkin, he's an absolute master. He's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and even though I, I didn't do my MFA there, I just, I, in my mind, I've, I've always thought, wow, I, I would have given everything up to just um, do uh, do my MFA um, under him. So, 
anyway, he's, he's absolutely incredible. So that was it. This was our first day where we, we really go head on against this way of painting that horrifies us, that scares us. And hopefully by the end of this week, we realize it's not so scary after all. I think this one for me was, uh, was pretty scary, but, uh, but I think we, uh, we did a good job. So I'm pretty happy about that. That was it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.